Hi, welcome to GRE Bytes. My name is Davis. I'm an educator with over 10 years of experience. And I'm Orion, the founder of Stellar GRE. We're here to bring you your weekly bite-sized episode on GRE prep and grad school admissions. For more information, check us out at StellarGRE.com. Again, we're talking about uh, this week uh, strategies for the quantitative section primarily. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard you use this phrase before, which is uh, uh, clipping coupons and something to avoid um, and the way I understand that is, you know, uh, thinking that you could, rather than writing out certain steps, you could just do a little bit of mental math, hold an answer in your head, and somehow skip forward a few steps and be faster on it. But that's mm -hmm. something that you've expressly said, don't do. Please, yes. Please elaborate. Don't clip coupons, correct. Yeah. So what you just described is one example. So for example, rather than writing things down to do a little bit of mental math or arithmetic, to save the few seconds of actually you know, making the math explicit on your piece of paper. That's an example of basically taking a shortcut. I call that clipping a coupon because it doesn't really save you all that much. In terms of time, it saves you fewer than five seconds, mm -hmm. maybe even less. And that's primarily why people don't clip coupons in real life either. Like, I mean, do you clip coupons? I get them in the mail all the time. Well, why not? No. You can I save mean, some money, dude. Don't RE, you want to save REI money? REI dividends, but that's only because it's digitized. I can just ask at the checkout. Yep. You don't have to cut anything out. You that's don't have right. to bring, remember that's to bring right. it to the store. No and more box tops. Exactly. So, but you could save money. Like, I get those mailers all the time. Mm -hmm. So why don't you clip coupons? Don't you like saving money, dude? It's just not worth the time. Exactly. Like, if you spend a half hour clipping coupons, that's going to save you $4? You're basically working for $8 an hour, which is less than half of minimum wage here in California. That's not a really good use of your time, you see? Mm -hmm. So, plus, half the time I've tried to clip coupons, I end up losing them or not having them when I need them in the store. You so. have to remember to bring them, and yeah. oftentimes you don't. It's a huge hassle. Yeah. So, basically, it's not worth it. Yes, and a, on a very absolute level, you can save some money, but if you take a more economic holistic view, you're actually on some level losing money. Because mm -hmm. what if you spent a half an hour of time, an extra half an hour on your side hustle or at your job? Like mm -hmm. how much money are you going to make in a half an hour versus how much are you going to save by devoting that half an hour to clipping coupons, right? Mm -hmm. You're actually losing money right. from one, in, in that perspective. Diminishing returns on your investment. Investment of time. Yeah, yeah, that half an hour would be much more profitably spent increasing your income than attempting to reduce your expenses. So in the context of the quant section, GRE, rather than, oh, I can just take a shortcut, do a little mental math, what are the examples of clipping coupons there in the GRE? Um, clipping coupons is generally as a last step. So most students, before they work with me, they get into questions slowly. They reread problems multiple times. Mm -hmm. They try to think out solutions all the way to the finish before they get started. Mm -hmm. And for these students, the hard part is understanding how to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. And on some level, they believe that that's actually the crux of the question, is like understanding how to solve it. And then once they reach that understanding, they rush through the actual solution. Mm -hmm. They rush through those steps that they need to a pass through to safely arrive at the conclusion right and it's in passing through those steps that students are trying to save seconds they're trying to clip coupons here why because they've spent minutes sometimes in the preparation for mm -hmm. the solution they spent minutes reading and rereading and rereading and thinking and considering and then once they've hit upon a solution they're like i don't have the time i need to pass through this as quickly as possible mm -hmm. so my approach is basically completely the opposite we get into questions fast, sometimes without even knowing how or why anything that we're doing is useful. As soon as you can do something, reading the question for the first time, start doing That's it. That's continuous solving. Yeah. yeah, so we read until we can do something, and we stop and force ourselves to do it, with suspending judgment as to whether or not it will be useful, and we basically solve the question continuously, but in a state of relative uncertainty, mm -hmm. with, let's say, the faith that everything will kind of come together in the final analysis. Mm -hmm. So we get into questions within seconds, but we move through each step slowly and carefully because we recognize that with, with enough preparation, understanding how to solve a problem is 
like is something that we can master. We can look at a question based on our structure and content diagnoses, recognize the type of problem we're dealing with in seconds, queue up the relevant strategies in our working memory that have worked in the past, and boom, we know how to solve the question, sometimes without even reading it, in a matter of seconds, at a glance, mm -hmm. at times. So, we, stellar students don't, after a sufficient amount of time, they don't get stumped on how to solve the problem, they, and more and more of their error variance becomes due to their own carelessness. And obviously, the faster that you go, the more likely you're going to make careless errors. We did an episode about that, you mm -hmm. know, battle between accuracy and efficiency. Mm -hmm. So that's really why it's not worth it to clip coupons on the GRE, because saving those, attempting to save those few seconds by skipping one step will like triple or quadruple your careless error rate and make it more likely that the student will blow the point on the very last step. It's usually the last step mm -hmm. that students tend to clip coupons because they can see the finish line. Mm -hmm. um, carelessness is always caused by mentally time traveling, as, mm -hmm. as I've, I think I've said in the past, which basically means that students are thinking about what they're going to do while they're still doing something else. Sometimes they're mentally time traveling just a second ahead of where they are. Their, their hand is writing something, but they're thinking about what they're going to write next. Yep. And, then and then their hand writes something else. It, it, it writes what they plan to write on the next step, mm -hmm. on the previous step. And that's where the carelessness comes in without awareness because the person is not in the present moment. They're only one second ahead of the present moment, but that's enough of a gap to create the opportunity for carelessness to rear its head and the whole question to be uh, destroyed, basically. Right. So that's also why we talk about how the GRE is really a measure of sustained mindfulness. It's like, how can you stay on the razor's edge of the present moment, not one second ahead of yourself or an hour behind yourself um, for four straight hours? It's extremely yeah. hard to do. Yeah. So clipping coupons, what does that look like? It's often um, mental math. It's relinquishing fail-safes. Fail-safes, as I think I've mentioned on a previous episode, are objective idiosyncratic behaviors that should prevent the manifestation of carelessness if they're utilized. Like mouthing the number that you mean to write in that step, keeping yourself focused as you're writing it. That's a great one. Yeah. I mean, I call it subvocal self-talk. Mm -hmm. I look like a maniac when I take the test because I'm using all of these behavioral tricks to kind of keep myself on the straight and narrow because I realize I'm the greatest source of my own error. Right, and then if you do something like that, uh, Failsafe? Yeah, failsafe, but quiet self-talk or subvocal self -talk. subvocal self-talk. So you're not bothering other people. But that, but what that does, right, is it gives you is the opposite of clipping a coupon. You're 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 giving yourself that point of reference to if all of a sudden you're mentally time traveling, but you've already been saying you have a point where you can see oh there's an error there and you can check it, safeguard against it. Yeah, that's right. And oftentimes people jettison. Uh, a fail-safe like subvocal self-talk because it does slow them down, but that's by design. Mm -hmm. Solving questions at the rate of speech is actually a more humane way of solving problems at the rate of thought, which mm -hmm. moves like lightning and can very quickly and without warning go off on you know, tangents that aren't really useful mm -hmm. to students. Mm -hmm. So by slowing things down, students are more like, are less likely to go on unproductive tangents and are also less likely to make careless mistakes. But, it, but it, by design, it does slow them down. And so if students start to get panicked or anxious because they're running out of time or they just become impatient, the fail-safes are usually the first things that they throw overboard, mm -hmm. but they're so light. They only take a few seconds to do. They're not actually saving the ship by throwing them overboard. Mm -hmm. They should be throwing the heavier stuff overboard. And the heavier stuff are things like rereading problems multiple times mm -hmm. or double checking your work or solving questions both algebraically and using the plug-in strategy or something like that. Mm -hmm. Those are weighty things that take much longer, sometimes even minutes to accomplish and will more likely save the ship than throwing off the, the bunting, you know, which are the little fail yeah. They should only take a couple of seconds to do anyway. So again, it's about, it's about investing our effort and time in, in something that's going to give us uh, a positive return on that effort and time as opposed to a diminishing return. Of course. That's right. I mean, that's just optimization in anything, right? We want to give our time and energies to the things that have the best possible chances to create the biggest positive result for us. That's right. I mean, Stellar is all about data-driven empirical science. It's like we got it down to an art. It's like, do these things. On the whole, statistically speaking, 
this is your best possible chance of getting the most questions right in the shortest amount of time, consistently. Okay. That's it. That's like right. People pay me money. Anything yeah. less is just like snake oil salesman ship. So if you if you're interested in any of this, come check us out. Thanks for tuning in today. We'll be back next week for another bite sized episode of GRE Bites. And if you have another topic you'd like to discuss on a future episode, let us know. StellarGRE at gmail.com. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.